I think it's just great. And I think what we're going to find, and only time will tell, but there's a thing called a technology point of immersion. So this is where you have in your life things that you never knew you didn't have. So this generation has never known a time without the internet, without smartphones, without all of these things. And you go back in each of these generations and you find the point of entry for technology, which was second nature to them. So like your grandparents, radio was second nature, a telephone, a you know, even if it was a rotary dial telephone, that was second nature. Then they didn't think about it. They just used it. They went over and turned on the television. That's the way technology evolves. And whatever the next generation is, whether it's Elon's Neuralink or or something else of of equal <laughs> invasiveness that we put on our heads or elsewhere, you know, for the generations that evolve, this will be second nature to them, and they will not even think about it. And the value of a great instructional designer is that they know their populations. They know when they need to explain filing cabinets and how you store things and all the other visuals that are very apt to, to what we're trying to do to make it go into their level of, of experience and understanding. And I think the challenge will be for a lot of us is not to go too far with populations that aren't ready. I mean, there's, I don't see it much anymore with online, but there was a time when half the people that came, it was their first online class. They didn't like it because it was online. And that's why they didn't like it because it was online. They couldn't sit in class and they couldn't do all these things. And you go through that and we've all been through that. But I honestly believe as the technology evolves and as new generations are born with these technologies and they are second nature to them, I think we will evolve to really incredible things. And that's the value of instructional design is we take all of these mixes of populations, the people that have this experience and don't have this experience, and we find a way to make this where they need it to be. So whether it's doing things ahead of the course to get them up to speed on technology, like pre-immersion LMS training or whatever we need to do, we can do that. And Mona, you got a great question. How can we make learning engaging for all? Um, this is great design, right? We got to know our populations. We have to know what interests them, what their expectations are, you know, where they are in terms of how they want to share their time and what they're willing to engage in. And the other part of that, I think, and Holly and Denise jump in here, but one thing I've found is that we can't always have one group for a course. I mean, there are populations that need to be divided up either by level of experience or, or other factors that we have as designers. And what I've seen a lot in organizations is they try to amalgamate everything into one course with a variety of populations. And when you break these populations out, you have much more successful learning experiences. You have better mastery because you've put this where it needs to be for the right people. So I think that's a great instructional design question because that's what good instructional designers do is look at these populations. And I don't know, Denise and Holly, but I can remember going in with courses that were just horrible. And the reason they were horrible is because they were trying to teach too broad a, a community of, of learners. Mm -hmm. They just weren't ready for some more or most weren't or whatever. Right. And I mean, I've had the experience where I've had courses where I feel like it's not going fast enough. It's really, really basic, and I really shouldn't be in that class, but I have to be in that class because it's part of a curriculum of some sort. And it's it's frustrating as a learner to feel like you are going 10 miles an hour when you really want to be going 50 to 60 miles an hour because that feels more comfortable and a different pace. And so I think there are many cases where that should be that should be the norm, where learners learner groups should be split up and and that's where a good population analysis, I think, comes into play when you're in the analysis phase of instructional design is to understand who this, who the population is and is this, is this a one course thing or is this a, these two separate learning events that we need to have or three or four or five. Mm -hmm.